now, fifth winningest coach in college football history and is second in total wins as far as current coaches go behind Bear Bryant of the University of Alabama. The numbers to call here for Coach Eddie Robinson of Grambling, 282-5111 here in the city. The toll-free line is 1-800-532-1111. Our long-distance line for people listening to us and calling from outside the state of Iowa is area code 515-282-5120. Coach Robinson, you keep on going. It's your 41st year at Grambling, and that's the only place you've ever been as a coach. You're 63 years old right now. You're still going strong. Are you ever going to quit? Surely I'm going to quit. Uh, you think about quitting all the time. You try to plan retirement. Uh, I've been very fortunate. I haven't had any health, health problems, and I enjoy coaching. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of hard work, but I enjoy it. So I kind of figure from one to five years, and I'll probably be out of it. Coach, what is your most memorable team? You've had a lot of great teams, of course, being a member of the Southwestern Athletic Conference since 1959. I'm sure some teams before that, too. Could you list a few? Well, I guess the, the, the 42 team, the second year that we were in coaching, we had a disastrous first year right out of college, and then the second year in 42, we won them all, and, uh, and then again in... Uh, 60 we had a 55 we had another great team uh, we ended that season in uh, the orange blossom classic against florida a&m and uh, we won that and uh, then um, there were quite a few other teams between ernie according to ernie Ladd, the 60 team is the best team that ever walked on the field for grambling doug williams would tell you that the 77 team so we got a whole lot to remember, but I tell you, I remember the team last year because they were the first team since uh, 1968 that came up with four losses. So we got uh, to remember different teams. We're speaking with the head coach of the Grambling University Tigers, the head football coach for uh, 41 years. This is his 41th season coming up. Eddie Robinson, who has a career record of 297 wins, 98 losses, 13 ties. And, Coach, you heard the furor about Bear Bryant last year, everybody talking about how many wins he has and how he became the uh, winningest coach in college football history. I wonder if uh, you feel overlooked at all. Oh, no, no, I don't. Uh, you know, something like this, uh, it, it becomes a, a national attention when you get uh, – when you start closing in on people like uh, Warner and Alonzo Stagg, but in our area, we're really fortunate. Uh, we have about uh, five or six, uh, oh, well, we have a lot of uh, uh, radio stations. We just have a lot of media around here, and it's always something about it in the papers. And, I, you know, I don't know what goes on in the other areas, but, you know, this business of football is an area of matter. People have to sell tickets in their own area, and uh, I think we get a lot of uh, coverage on, uh, you know, our wins through the past years. Coach, one thing that Grambling has had a distinction of over the years is, is the fact that you've sent a lot of players to pro, to pro football. What do you think is responsible for that? Well, I think that we've been fortunate through the years to have some of the finest football players in the game play for us at Grambling. And... Uh, they have had success, and uh, a lot of the youngsters read about them and see them, and they feel many times that they can come to Grambling, and maybe this might be a stepping stone to get to professional football, and we feel if he comes our way, then we got to make him finish college and leave our brand on him. But I think this, you know, when you have people, for instance, this year, this is our first year to have three receivers in the league in the same year to, to go over 1,000 yards in reception. I like Sammy White had over 1,000, Frank Lewis had over 1,000, and uh, Charlie Joyner had over 1,000. So uh, it's just the kind of ball players. And, you know, like the young man we got now, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, he wouldn't possibly be the best receiver in, uh, in college football by the end of the year, True Man Johnson. And uh, when these people come your way, you, you're real fortunate. 
What about some of these players that have gone to the pros? Could you talk about a few of them that you remember most? Uh, well, I tell you, you kind of put me on the spot when you say that because uh, when you talk about one and you don't talk about another and he's close to some of his friends and, you know, he's a little disappointed. I tell you what we do, we talk about uh, an early guy and then one, well, Tank Younger was our very first uh, professional football player. Uh, student to, to leave us and play professional football. He played with the Rams. And uh, Younger, while he was playing, came back and predicted that uh, Willard Davis, who uh, uh, was, was uh, signed by Cleveland and uh, went on to play for the incomparable uh, Vince Lombardi. And uh, so, uh, uh, like Willie and like Tank and and the late people uh, like Doug and Hunter and Sammy White and those guys, they were just all great football players. We're talking with Eddie Robinson, the head football coach at Grambling University in Grambling, Louisiana, a living legend in his own time, 282-5111, the local line for Des Moines and suburbs surrounding towns. Toll-free Watts line for everybody else in the state of Iowa, 1-800-532-1111. And our special long-distance line is area code 515-282-5120. That is the line for people calling into WHO Saturday Sports Line from outside the state of Iowa. Coach Robinson, you don't just get football players and teach them how to block and how to tackle and how to run and how to catch passes. There, there's more to grambling football, I get the impression, than just being a football player. Well, it certainly is. You know, most of the guys have been taught that in high school, and uh, and naturally we try to improve on what they have already. In fact, if they didn't have uh, some qualities that we like, we wouldn't even sign them. That's, that's true with most schools. But we think that uh, uh, the important thing about the young, uh, if the young athletes coming to us, that he needs a college degree, uh, he needs to have a profession that uh, will support him and his family in the in the in the manner desired after his playing days are over. And then uh, a lot of guys are not going to get to professional football. And uh, we don't try to sell everybody on professional football. We really try to sell him on uh, on on uh, an area where he can have success. That's what we think. And what he wants to do in college. He might be interested in medicine. Uh, he might be interested in business. We find today that uh, more of our, our, our athletes are going into the business area. Recently, Coach, I, I watched a movie, a uh, made-for-TV movie, and I can't remember the name of the movie, but it starred Bruce Jenner. And Oh, yeah, that was the... Uh, Gremlins, White Tiger. Yes. Uh, I saw the movie. I was impressed by it. Do you think it was a realistic uh, adaptation of what actually happened down there? Well, uh, it was, uh, well, you know, like movies, uh, the, the story was correct, and but they had they had to add some other things to really sell it. But, uh, Such as? The, 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 the whole philosophy of everything concerning... James Gregory was correct, and I really thought Harry Belafonte did an excellent job. Well, what were some of the things that were, they had to change to sell the movie, Coach? Well, you know, some of the things that maybe <laughs> the way he was, uh, well, some of the things that happened to him, the team never would have allowed that kind of thing because, uh, cause that happened in uh, one semester, and he really stayed with us four years. But like most movies, when they make them, they just have to change some things. But the whole story uh, that was written, My Little Brother is Coming Tomorrow, it's just like the story. Our guest during this segment of WHO Saturday Sports Line is Eddie Robinson, who is the head football coach at Grambling University down in Louisiana, one of the most successful college football coaches of all time. 2825111 is our local line for Des Moines and surrounding suburbs. 1-800-532-1111, the toll-free statewide Watts line. And outside the state, 515-282-5120. Back in a moment. It's a sign of strength to ask for help when you're overwhelmed. Call the Family Counseling Center, 288-9020, a United Way agency. Robert 
Young with an idea on how to stay cool during these hot summer days. It's Sanka on ice, and it's easy to make. Just place one rounded teaspoon of Sanka instant decaffeinated coffee in a tall glass. Stir in one cup of cold water, add ice, cream and sugar if you like, for a great summer cooler that's 97% caffeine free. That's why you drink Sanka great Four thirty at WHO Saturday Sports Line. We're visiting with Eddie Robinson, the head football coach at Grambling University. He is entering his forty-first season. He has a career record of two hundred ninety-seven wins, ninety-eight losses, thirteen ties. Coach Grambling University. They've had a great football tradition. However, when it comes to going to major bowl games, a chance to really get some publicity uh, via the national networks. You don't seem to get that opportunity, and I wonder uh, what that does. To, does it hurt your recruiting, or how, what, do you, what do you feel about the whole situation? Uh, that's, uh, well, you know, it's, it's our classification. We're in Division 1-2A, uh, and uh, the, the Orange Bowl and uh, the Sugar Bowl and uh, Rose Bowl and those, uh, are, those particular bowls, they only invite, uh, the, which was once the University Division, and not the college division. And now they mainly invite the Division I schools. So, uh, but the NC2A has taken care of that in a way. In fact, they have a playoff. We have a 12-team playoff now. And the year before last, we were in the playoff. Uh, it wasn't a 12-team then. We were against Boise State, and we lost in the semifinals. So, uh, they haven't, and I don't think they will soon invite schools from 1 to A for major bowls like the Orange Bowl and the Sugar Bowl. And I, I think you have to understand that and be able to explain it to persons when they ask you what division you're in and why you aren't invited. I would suspect also the fact that you've been able to send a lot of players to pro football has to help your recruiting efforts. Well, it certainly does, and uh, this is what we try to do. Of course, uh, we play in uh, many games across the country because uh, we want to expose you and we want people to see us, and all of that helps our recruiting. Because if we could get to one of the major bowls, that would help us too, but we have to be realistic about it, that uh, we aren't going and no other team in Division uh, one to a not any of those teams are going either. Well, Coach, I, I can't help but feel optimistic, though, about the realignment of college football because you've got some schools that were once in 1A, the major university division, now moving down to, I don't know if I like the word moving down, moving over, should I say, to 1AA. Yeah. Drake University, for example, right here in Des Moines, a fine, fine football team with Chuck Shelton. I, I see in the next few years with teams that were previously classified as being in 1A that are moved over to 1AA, I think there will be a lot of exciting competition, and there are some new stadiums, at least here in the Midwest, that I can talk about that might be able to take on some bowls. There's one in Indianapolis that's going up, one in Minneapolis. Don't forget about Detroit. So there might be some possibilities for some cities that might want to pick up some teams that otherwise would not go to bowls. Well, I really feel that uh, this is it, what you just said. If you had any cities that would want to sponsor uh, a bowl game with the participants coming from the Division One Two A, that would be a starting point. But the NC Two A uh, is really sponsoring uh, playoffs to give those teams who will not be invited to bowl games an opportunity to have a playoff. But we talked in our last meeting about just what you said. Uh, if we could get a city or cities to say this bowl game will be for teams uh, in the one uh, AA classification, this would really be a starting point, and I think uh, this would really help our division. And it would have to be a city who is the home site of a one, well, it doesn't have to be, but it would be nice if they would have a a Division One Two A school near. We're speaking with Eddie Robinson, who's the head coach, uh, head football coach at Grambling University. Two eight two five one 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 is our local line for Des Moines and surrounding suburbs. One eight hundred five three two eleven eleven. The toll free statewide watch line outside the state. 
The call must be prepaid. Area code 515-282-5120. Coach, you've had some great teams over the years, as we mentioned. Have you ever uh, just looked back and uh, wished that you'd had a chance to go up against some of the great teams from Alabama, Nebraska, some of the other national champions, and had your players look at them and say, we could beat those guys if we played them? Well, we've had the opportunity, and I don't think that uh, it doesn't work, like you said, just look at them and say you can beat them on some years you can beat them and some years you can't. Uh, we've had the opportunity to play some. Uh, we played schools like Temple, and uh, we played schools like uh, Oregon State, and we played teams like SMU, and SMU gave us a good beating last year, and we're looking forward to playing them again in 83. Now, I think on given Saturdays, teams in 1-2A can beat some of the teams in uh, Division one singly, but now you have to face it on every weekend going against those teams. You're going to have problems because of the manpower and, and the, the support that those schools are getting and they're recruiting. Uh, it's easier said than done. Now, we will play uh, SMU again in, uh, in uh, 83, and, uh, and uh, Oregon State comes to Shreveport in 85. We, we played them uh, in 75, and we're waiting 10 years for a return game. Well, now, I tell you, you would like to play because uh, if you're a football coach, you want to really know how you stack up with the other coaches. And, uh, but I don't think that uh, right now at Gramlin, I would want to uh, probably take on, I'm being, I'm, I'm being real about it. I wouldn't want to take on uh, Michigan one week, Ohio the next week, US, uh, USC the next week, and Alabama, not on my budget and my recruiting. <laughs> Coach Robinson, you've been coaching for 41 years. Obviously, there have to be some games that stand out in your mind, and I know this is kind of putting you on the spot, but are there uh, some memorable games in your brain? Uh, you were speaking of games that I would remember? Yes. Yeah, well, we've had uh, a lot of games that we have a traditional uh, game, that uh, 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 a traditional rivalry with, uh, with uh, Southern University, that uh, our team in our state, that that uh, that draws about uh, seventy thousand people, and uh, we've averaged seventy thousand since nineteen seventy four, and uh, it's really for bragging rights. And this year they have the bragging rights, and uh, you know games like uh, the game in Temple uh, with Temple in Tokyo, uh, like they scored uh, to the go ahead touchdown with. Uh, three minutes and 10 seconds on the clock and kicked the ball in the end zone. We had it on the 20 with the uh, same number of uh, seconds left. And Doug Williams called time out when we were on there at nine. And it was about uh, 53 seconds or 43 seconds on, on, the, on, the, on the scoreboard. And after a quick talk, he went in and scored it. And, and we were with about 55,000 people. It was a great moment for us because we hadn't lost in Tokyo. We had won the previous year, and uh, games like that, they were real thrilling, and we remember those things. I guess the real close games that uh, you come from behind and win, you tend to remember them or the ones that you lose more than the others. Well, Coach Robinson, how do you feel after a loss? Uh, some coaches say that it's really hard to sleep at night. Other coaches uh, try to hide it from their team because they always have to look forward to next week. You don't lose too often, so I am just curious as to how you feel when that uh, rather rare event does happen. Well, I'm always con I, I always take a good shot at Eddie Robinson after the ball game. We go in the dressing room and talk to our team. Uh, win or lose, and the 41 years I've never walked in the dressing room and accused any player of losing the ball game. I will accuse. I, I, I look to Eddie Robinson first to think about my preparation, and I have to face the team when they lose. I'm more concerned about them when we lose than when we win, because when we win, they belong to the fans and to the media and to everybody. When they lose, they belong to Eddie Robinson and. Uh, I think the team is 
the direct results of your work. Uh, you put the team out there and you coach in the team, and if they lose, when you say the team can't play, you're really saying you can't coach. So it's that type of thing. We have an understanding, and we win, but we also know that there are people capable of beating us, and, uh, and if anything happens to us and we lose, we have to be together to uh, go back to the practice field and try to work it out. That's the best thing that we can do. Coach Robinson, when you finally decide to quit coaching football at Grambling University, what would you most like to be remembered for? I would, I think in a way I would like to be remembered uh, as a coach with concern about the people who played for me and one who tried to, to make the best contribution I could to the American society through the American youth. Coach, have you ever been approached or thought about uh, coaching pro football? Well, we have um, in 77, the late Cal Rosenblum in, uh, extended an invitation to us to come out for an interview for, for the coaching job at the Rams and then later came back and after we didn't get together on the head coaching job to talk about uh, uh, another position with the team and... Uh, so that was about the, the, the most uh, direct uh, offer I'd had in uh, coaching in professional football. Do you like to coach in pro football? Well, I think about it. Uh, you know, like to know what I could do, but I, I don't really think I would want to go into it. I don't know. Nobody's made me an offer that I, I couldn't refuse, but I think college football to me is more exciting and I, I feel that uh, maybe I might be needed more in college football. Okay, let's go to a phone call right now for Eddie Robinson. Go ahead, you're on the air. Hello, you're on the air with Eddie Robinson. Hello, Coach Robinson. Yes. Uh, I wanted to, first of all, congratulate you uh, on your 41 years of great work at Grambling. And then I wanted to ask if you could talk a little bit about the uh, women's program. Uh, tell us a little bit about what it's like and... and uh, you know, how, uh, if they're recruiting up this way or uh, whatever information you can give us. Well, yes, uh, we have a very fine uh, program for women at, uh, at Graham, and we have one of the top track uh, teams uh, in the country, and uh, we have an uh, outstanding basketball team, and we into tennis and softball. In fact, we recruit all over the country, but most of our recruiting football-wise and basketball-wise in the past has been into Louisiana, but we are looking for uh, young ladies uh, who, who can help us enhance our athletic program. You know, a long time, we were into women athletics long before a lot of teams because back in the 40s, I even coached women basketball and uh, we were real happy to see, uh, see basketball and women the women's program make a, a comeback into the universities, and uh, they're really doing a fine job. Uh, if there were a girl that was interested in coming to Grambling, is is there a women's coach or someone that she might yeah, contact? Yeah, uh, Gwen Christen. Gwen Christen, but I'm the athletic director, oh, okay. and if they can't remember Gwen, uh, I'm in telephone book. Uh, we have an office number. They can write me, and she'd get it within a matter of minutes after I have it. But uh, it's Gwen Christian. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, ma'am, for calling up on WHO Saturday Sports Line. Coach Robinson, we've just about approached the end of our time with you, and I'd like to thank you very much for being with us, and good luck for the next season and whatever your life might bring you to do. I uh, thank you very much, and I think you really conduct a fine interview. Well, Coach Robinson, we were just glad to have you on the program. Believe me, it is our privilege to have you on. It was really appreciated. Well, I am privileged to be on, and thank you very much. Thank you, Coach. Uh, the head football coach at Grambling University, that is Mr. Eddie Robinson. Coming up uh, this afternoon, we'll be finding out about the Quad Cities Open Golf Tournament, still more from the Iowa Masters Golf Tournament, and we'll talk about girls' sectional softball as well. We'll also be talking, hopefully, with Tommy Lasorda, the manager of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Let's take this break, then we'll have a sports update from the Associated Press. 